I'll begin in verse 11, join me in verse 12. The Bible says, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Father in heaven, thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the fellowship of the saints that we've enjoyed, for the, Lord, for the, the privilege of offering up prayers to, to, to heaven on behalf of, of others, and Lord, just the, the, the privilege of singing songs of praise, Lord, to have our hearts uh, to turn to the cross by way of music tonight, and Lord, we certainly come to the preaching of the word and just ask you, Lord, that your word would go forth in mighty power. Pray that you'd hide me behind the cross tonight, and Lord, that your words would, uh, would, would find lodging in our hearts, and, and Lord, certainly find... Uh, uh, expression in our activities this week. We love you and, and thank you, Lord, for loving us. We thank you for uh, giving us the word of God that we can study and, and consider. We thank you, Lord, for its stories. We thank you for the words of Jesus that we have before us tonight. And just ask you, Lord, to, to give us uh, hearts that are ready to receive this into good ground. And Lord, please uh, eliminate any distractions that would keep us from hearing the word of God. Please give us the character and, and the Holy Spirit leading to, to put these things into practice. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. And you may be seated. It's a familiar passage of Scripture and, 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 and certainly uh, something that I, I, even though familiar, uh, certainly bears our inspection every time we, we, we cross paths with it in our reading and studying of the Word of God. Um, uh, Jesus Christ in His earthly ministry met many people, healed many sick people. Uh, among those that he healed, we understand from the Bible, there were blind folks in that number, those that could not see. There was a man even born blind, and his healing from blindness was the first of, of its kind. Uh, and uh, uh, so we see many blind folks that were healed. There are many people that uh, were hearing impaired, that had lost their ability to hear. And Jesus Christ uh, gave them that ability to hear once again. Uh, we saw many, we see some in the Bible that were uh, afflicted with various diseases, uh, uh, and, and, and ailments, and, and Jesus Christ had no trouble in healing them. Uh, we read several times that Jesus Christ restored dead back to life again, and, 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 and certainly appreciate his healing power and raising even the dead back to life. And many of the folks that Jesus Christ healed uh, had an affliction with, with demons or demon possession. It's a very real thing. It's not a Hollywood manufactured uh, a malady. I believe there's demon possession out in this world today. I think it's a very, very real problem and not the kind that Hollywood's manufactured. But I really believe there's a, a phenomenal spiritual battle going on in our world today. And if you read, I, I believe that the percentage of people that we read about in the Bible that were healed, many of them, uh, a good majority of them, probably were, were demon possessed people. And then the, the, the group of people that Jesus Christ still that we want to look at tonight were the lepers. The lepers were, were their own unique case. Uh, when you, when you uh, uh, contracted leprosy, uh, the first thing you had to do when you realized that you might have had a leprous uh, scab or sore <clears throat> was to take yourself to the priest. And the priest would examine that. And there'd be a period of examination to see what was going on with that infection. And there were certain uh, prescriptions given, certain uh, uh, various methods for inspection given in the Old Testament, and the priest would follow that. And if it was determined that it was leprosy, uh, that person that, that contracted leprosy would be removed from their home, from their family, from society, uh, from their city, from their village, from their town, and forced to leave society and forced to leave all that they loved and all that they knew and would be segregated from, uh, from, from, from simple common society because of that disease of leprosy. So it was a, a very damaging, very debilitating disease. Not only did it result in death and disfigurement, of those that had it, but the, the distance it put between loved ones was certainly remarkable because of, uh, because of the uh, communicable nature of that disease. The, these are the men that Jesus Christ met in our story tonight. The Bible says that Jesus Christ did not just meet one man that had leprosy, but there were a group of ten men that had leprosy. Uh, tonight, at the beginning of the sermon, I want to draw our attention, first of all, to the several similarities 
to these men that had leprosy. We see that they, first of all, and as I've just described, they all have the same affliction. They are all uh, diagnosed with and all separated from society uh, because of their leprosy. The Bible describes them as uh, ten men uh, that were lepers which stood afar off. That was, uh, that was what they had to do. They were not allowed to be close. Uh, uh, when anybody drew close to them, they had to, to cover their, uh, their, their face and, and say, unclean, unclean, so that uh, those who were unaware of their leprosy could take a, a wide berth uh, and, and stay uh, appropriately distant for them. And so uh, uh, their existence was a very lonely one. They did not have, and just think about this, they did not have the, the warmth of a hug. They, they never knew the, uh, the, the camaraderie of a handshake from that point on. Uh, to, to receive a, a kiss of affection was, was, was outside of their experience any longer. They were basically deprived of a very uh, necessary human uh, uh, experience in that being of affection. They didn't get it anymore. Why? Because their disease had removed them from that. And these men were all in the same boat. They all had the same affliction. They were lepers standing afar off. These men uh, with the same affliction, the leprosy, uh, made the same appeal. Uh, look with me, if you would, at, the, um, at verse number 13. And the Bible says, And they, this group of ten men that were lepers, they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. And so they made the same appeal to the same Savior. Amen, Master. Uh, Jesus, have mercy upon us. And, and uh, 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 maybe they heard uh, uh, that, that Jesus Christ had healed other lepers. We don't know. We can, we can speculate. Uh, maybe they just heard about some of the other healings that Jesus Christ performed and figured if he could heal that, then certainly he, uh, the, the healing of leprosy was not beyond his ability to, to, to perform. And so they cried out for mercy. Um, and again, I, I love we sang the, the, this afternoon down at the manor, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. And I wish somebody would write a song called Amazing Mercy, uh, how needful for me. I mean, uh, again, grace, uh, unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor. And that's why God sent his son, uh, not because we earned it, not because we deserved that salvation that God offers us, through his son, uh, but, but, but merely because God is love and God decided to love us. That's grace. Nothing in us would cause God to love us, but God just chose to. Mercy, again, uh, is on the other side of that coin. Mercy is not getting something we do deserve. And I'm glad I don't get what I deserve, amen? These folks that are so spoiled and so selfish and so self-centered walking around all the time, I'm not getting what I deserve. I'm going to protest. I'm going to have a sit-in. I'm going to have a kneel down. I'm going to do this. I'm going to draw attention to myself because I'm not getting what I, what I think I deserve. I'm glad I don't get what I deserve from a holy and righteous God because if I did, uh, it would be hellfire for me. It, it would be a, a separation from him. It would be the just condemnation of God upon my miserable, sinful self. You say, Pastor Ross, uh, that's not going to win you any points with, the, uh, uh, with the, the, the power of positive thinking crowd. No, it's not, amen, but it's real, amen. If we look at ourselves and see ourselves as, a, as the wretch that Amazing Grace describes us, we are, we are indeed wretches, amen, without God uh, of little worth, if any, uh, at all. But God, in His mercy and because of His grace, has saved us. So they cried out for mercy. Uh, we don't deserve it, but we, we need it. Amen. We, we, can't, we don't expect it, but, uh, uh, but, but Lord, we, we need that mercy. Lord, please uh, have mercy upon us. So they had the same affliction. They made the same appeal. They, they were given the same advisement by the Lord Jesus Christ. What did he tell them? The Bible says that when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. He didn't say, be thou cleansed. He didn't, he, he didn't uh, uh, conjure, a, uh, uh, c c compound any uh, uh, elixir uh, out of uh, his spittle and, and, and the dirt like he did with the, with the blind man. He just simply said, go and show yourself to the priest. Why? Because it, it required faith on their part to, to receive the healing. Why should we go show ourselves to the priest? Last time we showed ourselves to the priest, he said, get out of here, you got leprosy. Why do we need to be re-diagnosed with leprosy again? Uh, it could be the thought out of, a, out of the mortal mind, but, uh, uh, but, but these men were given the same advisement. Uh, you ask for mercy, here's what you need to do. Go show yourself to the priest. And so they were given the same advisement uh, uh, to go show yourself to the priest. It would result in the verification of their cleansing. They did not know it at the time. Why? Because when he said go show yourself to the priest, they were still in their leprosy. How do you know that? Because what the one man does, they were on their way before he realized he was cleansed. So he just gave them the, the instructions, the advisement, go show yourself to the priest. Uh, they were still, when they made their first steps toward town and their first steps toward the synagogue and, and their first steps toward the priest, they were still leprous as they were when they, when they cried out for mercy. But, but Jesus Christ had a plan, and, and his plan was to heal them because of their faith. So <coughs> they were given the same advisement, and they were all uh, partakers of the same advantage. The Bible says as they went, they were cleansed. They had to go first. And then when they went, they were cleansed. Let me just say something. Leprosy in the Bible is always a type or a picture of sin. 
We're all afflicted with it. It separates us. Sin separates us from the God that loves us. Sin separates us from the people that love us. Sin separates us from the things that, uh, that, that we ought to be uh, able to enjoy in life, uh, but that, that, that sin would rob from us. And we, if you don't mind me saying so, are, are, are spiritual lepers. Uh, we've been separated and segregated, and, and it's only because of the mercy of God and only because of the grace of God and, and, and through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that we find any type of cleansing and any type of healing whatsoever. And so we can put ourselves in the number of the ten lepers and say, you know, what like that leper I was separated like that leper I was lost like that leper I was undone like that leper I was uh, unclean like that leper I was grotesque like that leper I was uh, being disfigured by sin but thanks be to God there was a day when Jesus Christ passed by and Jesus Christ had mercy on this sinner and and, and thanks be to God for the mercy I received because in that mercy uh, mixed with faith amen uh, came God's grace and came God's forgiveness and came God's healing these men, uh, again, even though they had several similarities, there was a striking difference in that crowd. You know where I'm going with this probably, but let me preach on and, and, and make the appropriate points here. The Bible says uh, uh, when Jesus Christ gave them that command uh, to go show themselves unto the priest, the Bible says, and it came to pass in verse 14, that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. The striking difference between the one and the other nine. This one, when he realized he was cleansed, turned back. Oh, my friend, let me just say this. Let me make that comparison between us and the lepers. How many of us have turned back to, to give God thanks? How many of us, have, uh, upon realizing how great things God has done for us, have turned back and offered ourselves to God, have turned back and, and, and glorified God? How many of us have turned back and, and desire to stay by His side to thank Him for all the things that He's done? If it is true, and I believe it is true, the words of the psalmist where he says, the Lord daily loadeth us with benefits, then we ought, to be, we ought to be perpetually at the feet of Jesus Christ, thanking him for the good that he's done, thanking him for the grace that's been laid upon us, thanking him for the mercy that he's shown us, thanking him for the love that he's bestowed our way, thanking him for the salvation that he's promised us. There ought to be in our heart, uh, the heart of this one leper uh, that, that, that turned back. The Bible tells us in Zechariah 1.3, Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. James echoes this statement in James 4, 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Uh, my friend, this man, when he realized he was healed, when he realized he was saved, when he realized he was cleansed, when he realized he was made whole, turned back and, and began to give thanks to the one that, that, that gave him these great things. And I want to just say this. How many folks uh, that, that could have been in church today? didn't bother to turn back to God and thank Him for the salvation that they so willingly received when, when Christ was made available to them. How many uh, that could have been singing God's praises in a congregation somewhere or, or, or enjoying the fellowship of saints or uh, uh, could have entered into intercessory prayer for a brother and sister in Christ were nowhere to be found today. Boy, uh, they, like the nine, just kept walking on even though they realized they were healed. And uh, Let me just say this. These other nine knew they were healed because this, when this one man turned back, he glorified God with a loud voice. It wasn't something that was done in secret. It wasn't something his healing wasn't done before theirs. Uh, they were healed together. This man was the only one that turned back. This man with a loud voice glorified God, yet the other nine kept going. Amen? I don't understand their, I don't understand their actions there, but I'll tell you what, I don't want to be caught up in those actions. I, want to be, I don't want to be one of the ones that just takes the good things of God for granted, but I want to be sensitive to the things that God's doing. I want to be appreciative of the things that God is doing, and I want to, I want to make sure that he knows it's coming from a, a grateful heart that I that I am uh, uh, forever uh, 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 thrilled and, and overwhelmed by his goodness. One turned back. The striking difference continues. Not only did one turn back, the Bible says uh, uh, that he, um, excuse me, uh, not only uh, did he turn back, uh, but uh, uh, one glorified God. The other nine were healed just like this man was healed, but only one gave glory to God. Let me say this in, in our day and age, and, and I understand uh, 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 some of the hang-ups we might have, but, uh, and, and, and I understand some folks are, are a little more shy than others and things like that, but uh, if, you can't, if you can't sound out your voice in praise to God and glorifying God, there might be a little problem somewhere. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God and salvation to everyone that believes. Paul was so unashamed of the gospel, he was not even worried about going to prison. He was not even worried about losing his own life for that. He, was, uh, he appreciated what God had put into his hands. 
Only one came back. Only one uh, uh, turned back. Only one uh, glorified God. The Bible tells us in Psalm 29, uh, verse one, verses 1 and 2, these words. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord glory. Do unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The psalmist says uh, in Psalm 50, verse 23, these words. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. The psalmist also makes this statement in Psalm 107, 21. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. My friend, there ought to be so much praise coming out of our hearts that, uh, that it's hard to stop, that it's hard to contain. God has done so many good things for us. Not only has he given us an eternal salvation and loved us with an everlasting love and, and promised us a home in heaven uh, and, 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 and given us a, 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 a standing with him. But you think about the, the, the benefits of, of being his child every day, his watch care. He protects us when we sleep. He protects us when we drive. Now, to some of you, that might be a small thing, but I'll tell you to others, amen, that's a big deal. But God, God's hand of protection is upon us all the time. His eyes are upon us. Every time we pray, Brother Cal, his ears incline unto us. He, he listens, amen. We're right in his presence every time we pray. We're not talking about another human being. We're talking about the God that created this universe and all that's in it. We have his attention. We have his heart. We have his love. We have all these things. And, and, and how many of us ever deign to turn back and, 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 and glorify him with a loud voice? The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I guess we could be silent if God hasn't done anything good for us. But if he's done good for us, we can't afford to be silent. It, it, it's good to order praise. And it's, it's right for the child of God to thank God for all the good things he's done. You know, in heaven, uh, the Bible tells us about this next point, th this man who turned back, this man who glorified God with a loud voice, the Bible also says that he fell down on his face. That's a sign of worship. That's a sign of adoration. That's a sign of affection. Right now, in, uh, and, and we read this in, 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 in Revelation 4, verse 10, the Bible says in Revelation 4, 10 and 11, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Do you get the scene in heaven tonight? There are uh, 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 angelic beings, the serab seraphim and the cherubim, that surround the throne of God, crying out, holy, holy, day and night. They fall down before the throne on their face. The four and twenty elders are described here uh, 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 as falling down on their face before the throne, worshiping God and giving God praise. That's the, that's the actions, that's the attitude of heaven. Then why shouldn't that be the attitude here on earth? But when Jesus Christ taught us how to pray, uh, he said, uh, uh, with, uh, After this manner, therefore pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? We're supposed to model our actions after what we know is going on in heaven. This man fell on his face, a, 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 a token, a picture of his adoration, of, of, his, of his appreciation, of his affection for the Savior that just gave him back his life, that, that gave him back everything. Has not Christ done that for us? Amen. He's given us everything. Friend, I could lose every stitch of clothing I had. I could lose every possession I, I, I own. I could lose every earthly uh, thing of value right now. But, but if I had the Lord Jesus Christ, I still have everything. I ought to be at his feet. I ought to be on my face. I ought to be glorifying God with a loud voice. I ought to be returning to God and staying close to God with my days, not running off, not, not wandering away like, a, like a, a, an indifferent sheep or an apathetic sheep that just goes his own way because he thinks it's better. This man didn't do that. This man's difference made all the difference. He was the only one that returned. He was the, one, the only one that glorified God with a loud voice. He was the only one that fell on his face for the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one that found himself at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Pastor Ross, why is this so important? Because the Bible takes, a, uh, takes note of this and makes a, a great note of this. Um, in verse number 16, it says, And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. That's not just a throwaway line in there. He was a Samaritan. Probably in that crowd, because of where Jesus Christ was traveling, uh, uh, passing through the middle of Samaria and Galilee. Samaritans in there, lepers as well, probably some Jews in there. So there, uh, there, 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 at least one Samaritan in, in amongst these Jews. But the Bible says that this man that came back and glorified God and fell at the feet of Jesus Christ, uh, he was a Samaritan. 
And this makes a profound uh, impact on, on our understanding of the story for this reason. Uh, because when you understand what, how the Jews felt about the Samaritans, it really makes uh, this man's actions that much more powerful. The Samaritans were reckoned by the Jews to be ignorant and irreligious persons. They were regarded as no better than the heathens. And yet this man behaved as a religious good man who had a sense of his mercy, knew of his duty and his obligations and performed them. When the other nine, who were very likely were all Jews, acted very ungratefully, this man was found truly appreciative. The Jews and the Samaritans, we understand this, the Jews and the Samaritans did not like each other. They were very prejudiced. They were very, uh, you want to use the word racist in a proper sense, they were very racist against each other. The Jews didn't like the Samaritans and the Samaritans did not like the Jews. And that's just the way it was. And so we see this fact put in here that he was a Samaritan. It's, it's, it's a rebuff. It's a rebuke to the Jews that were ungrateful and unappreciative of the impact that Jesus Christ had made in their lives. We could finish up the story, and we ought to finish up the story, by listening to the words of our Savior very carefully. Verse number 17, we see these words, and we see the Savior's declaration here. And Jesus answering said, We're not ten cleansed. But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Remember, Jesus Christ was called to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, was he not? Very rarely did Jesus Christ ever turn aside and speak with the Samaritans or speak with the heathen. There was a Syrophoenician woman at one time that had a, a very sick child, and, and she called out for, for Jesus Christ. And, and Jesus Christ said, I'm not sent but to the, 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 the house of Israel. Uh, and, uh, and she said, true, Lord, but even, even uh, dogs feed from the crumbs from their master's table. And he was amazed at her faith. He, didn't want to, he, he, he acted like he had no dealings with her. But I'll tell you what, he, she, she and her faith and her, her importunity uh, uh, stayed with him until she got the answer she wanted. But Jesus Christ's ministry was to the Jews. And here we find a Samaritan that's getting in on the, on the good things that God was doing here. Jesus Christ said, uh, uh, there was only one return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. As we uh, look at the Savior's declaration here, uh, we see that Jesus Christ told this man, this stranger, this Samaritan, to go thy way. Uh, Albert Barnes in his notes on this passage spoke very interestingly when he said these words. He said, Renewed sinners... While their hearts overflow with gratitude to Jesus, express that gratitude by obeying God and by engaging in the appropriate duties of their calling and of religion. What does that mean? Uh, that, that obedience is part and parcel uh, of our appreciation for the things he's done for us. The, after the excitement of salvation wears off, it's our obedience, it's our love, it's our appreciation for Jesus Christ that keeps us close. This man was expressing that, and this man was told to go his way. And to go his way meant simply this, go, go and show yourself to the priest and go take up your part in society again. You see, when, when the grace of God appears to sinners, it allows us to take our place in society. It, it allows us to be productive members of society. It allows us to be uh, valued members of our homes. It allows us to be valued members of our communities again. Uh, sin that robs from us, sin that distorts us and disfigures us, uh, is then replaced by the grace of God and, and, and again, a Upon receiving that grace, upon receiving that mercy, upon receiving that healing, we are permitted to go and, 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 and play that part that God has designed for us and, and has created for us uh, that, we can only, uh, that only we can play. The will of God uh, being affected in our life. Go thy way. Uh, again, go to the priest and then go back to your home. Go back to your wife. Go back to your children. Go back to your friends. Go back to your family. You can do that now because you've been cleansed. And he made this statement, Jesus did, Thy faith hath made thee whole. His faith saved him. Were not these other nine cleansed? They were. But I don't think they walked away with an appreciation like this man did. I don't believe they walked away for, uh, I don't think they walked away with an affection that this man did. You see, there are, there are many people that are willing to call on Jesus Christ and, and, and be saved by him. But that's about as far as they go with him. And that's sad. Because they never get to know who Jesus really is, do they? Oh, they know him as Savior. And that's great. They'll, they'll be saved. But the Bible says, yet so is by fire. They'll have nothing to show for that. The ingratitude and, uh, and the, uh, the lack of, uh, 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 of discernment on the great things that God's done for them robs them of the ability to walk with God and enjoy God's presence on a daily basis. He was saved. Yes, he was saved from the, from the disease of leprosy, but, but also I believe his soul was saved because he trusted the Savior. Uh, he knew Jesus Christ here and, and worshipped him as his, as his God here. So uh, he was saved in soul as well as in body. 
Uh, why? Because Christ, the object of his faith, had saved him. As I was looking through this, this story here and, and making the, 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 the connections between our condition and the leper's condition and, and between our, our uh, uh, appreciation and, 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 and sometimes lack thereof, I came up with this one thought as I was thinking about uh, the actions of these ten men. I don't ever want to be part of the nine. I'd like to be the one that came back. I'd like to be the one that expressed his gratitude to Jesus Christ for what he did. But it's going to take some character. It's going to take some Holy Ghost leading, I guess, because we're very prone to forget the goodness of God. We're very prone to overlook sometimes the mercy of God at, at, at play in our life. We're, we're sometimes a little self-centered to the point where we don't realize how God's at work in our lives. Right. I'll tell you what, we need, to, we, need to, we need to realize God has done some pretty good things for us. Maybe it would do us good to, take, to, to, to make a journal on the answers to prayer. Uh, make a journal on, on, on the good things we see God doing on a daily basis that will keep us returning to his feet, that will keep us on our faces before him, that will keep us shouting out his praises with a loud voice uh, of how good God is. There's one thing, our, our world's full of noise, amen? And it's, there's one thing that needs to rain, rise above all that noise. It's just a clarion call of praise to our great God. There are so many other things going on in this world today, and just for the children of God to get back to praising God again would be revolutionary. It might spur revival. It might, it might set some people on edge. But I'll tell you what, it sure keep our hearts a lot, a lot softer toward him too. Don't be one of the nine. Don't be one of the crowd. Be, be, be the one. Be, be the one that, that came back and, and, and glorified God with a loud voice. Be, be, one of, be, be the one that stays close to Jesus Christ. Uh, be, be the one that, uh, that, 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 is, that is near him and at his feet, worshiping him. The ingratitude of the nine sure gets a lot of press. The, 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 the gratitude of the one gets a lot of press. But I think if we would estimate rightly, we need to put ourselves in a story and, and do our best to daily figure out what, what group we want to find ourselves in, the, 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 the gang of nine or the, or the, one, the one man uh, that made the striking difference in this whole story, the one that came back and, and appreciated the Savior for all that he did. I don't think a very earth-shattering, new, new thought-type sermon, but I hope uh, a call to us all to, to, to more fully appreciate, to more consistently appreciate the good things that God has done for us. There should never be any doubt in God's mind that he has done great things for us. Our expressions ought to tell that story over and over and over again. May we, may we use our mouths, may we use our hearts and our minds to bring honor and glory to God and, and to express that uh, uh, through examination, uh, all, all the good things that God has, has done and is doing in our lives day by day.